If you want to rank number one on Google using AI and rank for thousands of keywords, stick around in today's video because I'll show you my exact process that I've used to grow my website organically to six figures and revenue and ranking for thousands of keywords on Google. If you don't know, my name's Carmen. I've worked with Neil Patel, Dan Locke, a lot of big brands. I've helped my clients drive millions of dollars in revenue and I've been a copywriter and marketer for about 10 years now. And I want to show you my exact process I've used to grow my business and how I grow my clients' websites using SEO content. And nowadays with ChatGPT, Jasper AI, and all these tools, it's easier than ever, but you still have to know how to use them correctly and then optimize the content after. I've talked about it in a previous video regarding ChatGPT and how I don't think it'll replace writers, but rather it'll be a nice tool in a marketer's tool set to help them write better content faster. All right, now to jump right into it, the first thing we need is a topic. Now we'll start from scratch so you can see the entire process, but we can actually ask ChatGPT for SEO topic ideas about any kind of industry or niche. Now in this case, we'll write an article related to marketing. So we're gonna ask, uh, please provide us with a list of SEO topics related to, and we'll do digital marketing. And I'm using ChatGPT4, gives us a bit more uh, features and resources, but here we go. So we're gonna get a bunch of different topics, keyword research, on-page SEO, off-page, and even in individually, if we look into these, there's long tail keywords, metadata, HTML code. So even though these are individually topics, we can use those other ideas as subtopics almost. We can also call these content clusters, which essentially are the main topic. So let's say local SEO, and then everything under here would be individual articles we write to rank for that term in general. And normally you would have the main article or money page on your website, which might be a local SEO guide, and then all these smaller articles link to that main one. That's a whole nother topic of discussion, but something to think about when you're asking ChatGPT for ideas. But nonetheless, we have a ton here. And now the topic that I would like to talk about is going to be keyword placement. And I thought this would be a pretty niche topic. It won't be super competitive. I can already imagine that Moz and a lot of the big websites will be talking about this. But if we did an article on just on-page SEO, just keyword research, these are very high level and going to be very competitive. The more specific you are with the topic and keyword, the easier you'll rank as there's gonna be less competition and there's a bigger opportunity to stand out and write a good piece of content. But now we're gonna do keyword placement. So what we wanna do is actually now ask it to write a SEO blog post outline on the topic of this. And then we'll see what it gives us. So typically it writes an introduction and then essentially it'll give us all the different sections that we need to cover. And of course, we wanna look at the competition as well for ideas, and then we can edit this and optimize it. But let's actually see what it gives us, and then I'll show you how to use two really good Google extensions to scout out the competition and, and get more inspiration. Okay, so it gave us the introduction, section one, understanding keywords, keyword placement, important areas for keyword placement, advanced strategies, tools and resources, mistakes to avoid, conclusion, CTA. So this is really good right off the bat, but what we can do is actually go to Google and we can type in our keyword here, which is keyword placement, and we'll take a look at the top performing articles. Now I have two extensions here. One is SEO Quake, completely free, and also SEO metadata in one click, also completely free. And this will give us a ton of data to work with regarding our competitors. So let's open up some of the first results here on Google. So of course, Search Engine Journal, Bright Edge, Let's see what else. B2B digital marketer. So some pretty big websites on page SEO. But it looks like a couple of these articles aren't even necessarily about keyword placement. They're just about on page SEO. So that means that there's an opportunity to rank for this because not every page is essentially matching the search intent. And you can see that I think it was mostly the HubSpot article and maybe one other no, actually, they're pretty good. So it's really just that last spot, but that tells me there's at least that opportunity to be on the bottom of the first page for this if we write a pretty good article. But if we produce a really good one, we can easily climb up past all these other businesses. But once again, let's actually take a look at what these websites are doing. So this article right off the bat, you can see is pretty thin and short. It's maybe 500 words max, even probably less than that. But also you can see the website isn't that impressive. The footer is pretty bad, to be honest and it's a, a pretty simple but kind of poorly designed website. 
Now user experience and web design plays a huge role in SEO. So immediately I know we can now rank this website, not a problem, especially because my website's very optimized in terms of page speed, user experience, and other technical elements. This website too, look at this article. It's maybe a few hundred words long, uh, more of a simpler blog, good user experience. They have the uh, deeper breadcrumbs here for the blog posts. And then same with this website. So we know that we probably only have to write uh, maybe a few hundred words to be competitive with this article, but we wanna go above and beyond that anytime we're trying to beat the competition. So what I'll do is I will click SEO Quick, and this gives me a ton of data. Specifically, I wanna click Page Info, and I will be able to scroll down here. So technically there's 1,100 words on this page. Um, sometimes what it'll also do is it takes in the header, the footer, and different things on the page. So maybe the actual article is only 800 words long, but it pulls in everything else. So I wouldn't take this number um, with exact precision, but just know it's in that ballpark. We can also see that there are different keywords here. So one word phrases, two word, three word. So we can kind of get an idea of what keywords they're targeting. So that's good to know on that page. We also have this uh, tab. So we get a bit more information about the metadata, um, images, links, which is nice. We can also do headers. And this gives us the exact structure of their content. And what's nice about this is we can actually paste this in the chat GPT and ask them to use these keywords, especially when you start looking at all your competitors, you'll notice the different keywords that are kind of repeating in the different patterns. So we can actually paste this into ChatGPT after, um, and we'll get some, uh, some good content that way. But once again, let's click SEO Quake on Unimo's website, page info. So this is 850 words. We will go to this website over here, same thing, SEO Quake. Page info, 1,000, definitely not 1,000, that's for sure. But nonetheless, we should be writing around the 800 to 1,000 word mark. Um, but with this outline, I can already tell that we'll um, definitely shoot way over that. This is probably gonna be like a two, 3,000 word article, but nonetheless, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a chat GPT prompt that I use all the time and start writing the content and explain to you the prompt itself. Okay, so let's go down here. So. I'm gonna tell it to write, write the introduction. Now, I typically like to use the voice of Neil Patel. Um, now, him specifically in his content is very conversational, very friendly, very fun, but still authoritative. And that's the type of voice I've used in my blog and my content. So I ask him to use that, uh, the voice of Neil Patel, and break grammar rules if it makes content more conversation and flow better. Sometimes by breaking grammar rules, just reading it sounds better. And yeah, you know, you could probably edit it and you know point out little flaws, but it's actually done on purpose just to make the reading experience better. Uh, don't introduce yourself because when I do this prompt, sometimes he'll keep saying, uh, hey, hey, it's Neil Patel, X, Y, Z, and he keeps saying it with every paragraph, so I don't do that. Uh, don't repeat what you've said before to avoid any kind of duplicate content and redundancies make the content as actionable as possible, source stats to make it more credible, and use the keywords I provided before. So what we're actually gonna do before we put in this is we're gonna say, please use the following keywords. Do not write the article. I only want you to think about the following keywords. Do you understand? And then what we'll do is we'll go to, let's say, yeah, this page was pretty good. Let's look at their header structure. Nice. Yeah, so let's do this. Go back to ChatGPT, put this in, and then of course we wanna delete these H2s. and H4s. Essentially, it's understanding that we wanna use the certain keywords in the article, and it's also giving us some ideas of how it will actually incorporate them. So let that run, and then we're actually gonna use the initial prompt I had to actually begin writing the article. Okay, let's put in this prompt. So once again, write the introduction to the blog post and then have the rest of that prompt. Copy that, send it. And you can see, so it's writing the introduction out to the article based on the outline it provided. 
It's using the Neil Patel tone of voice and kind of branding elements. It's also using some data here. Now, when you get data from ChatGPT, just make sure to Google it after and confirm if it's right, just because they might have you know, pulled in the wrong piece of data, it might actually be completely incorrect. And a lot of the times it is right or it's kind of close to being accurate. Just make sure you confirm that after and you're actually linking to the original source. But nonetheless, this looks pretty good. And what I'll keep doing is write the first section of the blog post. And essentially what I'll do is I'll go one by one into each section and I'll see what it produces and then we'll, we'll come back to that. Okay, so ChatGPT generated the entire article for us, and now we have to start putting it into our CRM, which in my case is WordPress. And I've put the title in here. Now it uses the, uh, the main keyword, which is keyword placement. We also put SEO because people might put in keyword placement for SEO, SEO keyword placement, some kind of variation like that. And also put the full guide to make it appear as a really good full resource that someone can come read and they'll understand everything about keyword placement and we'll match that search intent and promise by actually being a very resourceful guide and long form piece of content. Uh, if you haven't been in WordPress before, I use the Yoast SEO plugin to help a lot and it's built on Elementor specifically, but we won't really see too much of that in this video. But essentially, whether you're on Shopify, BigCommerce, any kind of platform really, a lot of it will be the same. But nonetheless, we're gonna start taking the article here that it gave us and start putting it into WordPress. So we have the introduction here, and then we have our first section. And let me go back to the outline just to confirm. So that is understanding keywords. So this is gonna be our header tag, our header two tag to be precise. And we use header tags to break up content, provide a better structure, and also provides a good opportunity for SEO because we can put our keywords inside these header tags and when Google crawls it, it will go to those header tags for main information. It'll see those search terms we're targeting and will be more likely to rank for them. So understanding keywords and their role in SEO. I'm gonna click here, go to heading. Heading two is a default. Paste in the rest of that. And then essentially we'll proofread and edit it more later, but I also have Grammarly up that will immediately let me know if there's any kind of spelling mistakes or anything that I have to uh, consider. So I can easily just kind of click those in one button and fix them, but we'll give it a more thorough audit when we're done. So the basics of keyword placements. So let's go to that next section. That'd be right here. So basics of keyword placement. Once again, we have our main keyword, which is uh, keyword placement in the header tag here. Put that in. Duplicate content. Header two tag, paste the rest of that content in. We're essentially just gonna go one by one and get everything in here. Header two, paste that in. Got a couple more sections to go. So we're gonna do Okay, now we're on to the section about keyword placement tools. So we'll say keyword placement tools and resources. You can already see like how fast this is going, and once you kind of get into a good flow and you're focused, you can be getting some seriously good content up really quick with ChatGPT. And then, okay, we're going on to the keyword placement mistakes. So we'll say common keyword placement mistakes to avoid. Heading to paste that bad boy in. And then we're gonna have the conclusion. Now with the conclusion, normally what I do is I usually say summary of, summarizing, wrapping up uh, keyword placement and SEO, depending on your branding and your tone of voice, you might change that, but it's an easy way to kind of summarize the content, put in your main keyword, we'll put in that. And then I'll put a custom call to action. So I'd say if you want to learn 
more about SEO writing, check out my SEO copywriting course. And then the next thing we're gonna do is actually optimize the metadata. So if I go to the top of the page, we'll fix that. We'll go back to the bottom here. And with Yoast, we can actually customize our metadata and see if it's the right length. So the title tag is green, that's good. Normally for the URL, it's just the main keyword. So I'm gonna put keyword placement SEO. And then in the meta description, essentially I'll put um, a call to action. Learn more about how to properly perform keyword placement for your SEO content and rank higher on Google. And we wanna get into that green, so we're good to go there. I'll also do the appropriate tags and categories. So SEO, SEO. And now what we wanna do is add in some internal links to relevant content with good anchor text. So it's accurate to the page that it's pointing to. External links for data and other tools and resources, which helps the user and it's also good for SEO. And then also add in any kind of images, media, screenshots, and also the featured image over here. Now, technically when we looked at the other pieces of content, um, they didn't really have much media at all. They were very short. We're actually gonna copy and paste this into word counter and see the exact word count. Okay, we're looking at 2,400 words. So needless to say, we definitely have probably a better article than what's on the first page of Google, just based on pure word count alone, because we have sheer amounts of content in here that's really going to help people. And we do have to clean up a lot of the uh, grammar and little mistakes that are there. But once again, the next thing would be to add the internal and external links. And then we're essentially good to publish. And then I'd publish it. I would promote it to my email list, my social channels. I would submit it to Google Search Console to get it indexed even quicker. But that's essentially how you would speed write a really good SEO article. You should also use Grammarly or Hemingway app to clean up the grammar, any spelling mistakes or issues along the way that either you made or the AI made. But normally it's gonna give you pretty error-free content. Once again, you'd have to go through, align it with your brand, your tone of voice. It won't be perfect. You have to add your links, like I said, images, media, videos, and screenshots. I like embedding my YouTube videos where it's relevant. But nonetheless, once you actually optimize it after, it saved you 80% of the time, really, of coming up with the content outline, the ideas, the topics, actually writing it, and then you can optimize it for search engines like I showed you, and you'll be well on your way to ranking on the number one page of Google. Get into the process of doing this on a regular basis, posting on your content, make sure you're linking your new articles with your old ones and vice versa, and you're gonna grow a business organically, and this can easily lead to six to seven figures in revenue depending on your actual company and the industry that you're in. If you'd like to learn more about SEO copywriting and similar topics, go check out my free courses and resources in the description. Subscribe to the channel. I wish you the best on your SEO journey and I'll see you in the next video.